Hello everyone. A conversation overheard between a grocer and his young son went something like this. Have you fixed the scale so that we can reduce the weight on all the items? Yes, Dad. Did you mix the white sand with the sugar yet? Yes, Dad. Did you put the grade A sign on all that cheap coffee we bought the other day? Yes, Dad. Good, son. Off to bed now. Don't forget to say your prayers. Yes, Dad. Skeptics who discount religious faith often quote illustrations like this to prove their point. But they often fail to see or don't want to see the many genuine people who do live up to their faith and derive great peace from it. Others opt out of believing because they say that even Jesus contradicts himself. For instance, at the Last Supper he said to the Apostles, Peace I leave with you, this is my gift to you. And today we hear the exact opposite. Do you suppose that I have come to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, not peace, but rather division. Some cynical people often say that religion causes its fair share of division in the world. Well, the message of Jesus was divisive. Jesus only promised peace to those who believe in him. Before his passion, he said to the apostles, in the world you will have trouble, but fear not, for I have overcome the world. When people misinterpret the Bible, they too can ferment unnecessary division. I would say, for instance, that a fundamentalist view of the Bible served as a kind of backdrop, no, not backstop, to the troubles in Northern Ireland, the causes of which may, may now be contained, but are still bubbling under the surface. Calvin, for instance, believed that his devotees were predestined to be saved while those outside his circle would be lost. And as you know, Calvinism influenced the religion in Northern Ireland. Religious language like that can, over time, colour people's thinking and contribute towards civil unrest. In John's Gospel, Jesus says that people indoctrinated with a twisted religious mindset would even resort to violence and even killing, thinking by so doing they are pleasing God. They are very much mistaken, Jesus said. And we have seen many examples of this in our times. In some instances, however, when trouble threatens, God-fearing people can get scared and take flight, a bit like Peter, after he categorically denied knowing our Lord when confronted by the servant girl in the courtyard. In contrast, we find Jesus standing his ground in the face of opposition. For instance, Jesus confronted Simon the Pharisee for his lack of courtesy. He also stood up for people whom others looked down on, like Zacchaeus, the tax collector, or Mary Magdalene, branded as a sinner, or Bartimaeus, the blind beggar. These actions would not have endeared him to many people. They were divisive, as simple as that. True believers don't deliberately set out to pick a fight with anyone, but if they're genuine, the fight will surely come to them. So then, if you want a trouble-free existence, I think it's best to join another group, because being a Christian cannot guarantee you that. The peace which Jesus affords us if we follow him faithfully is more than a feel-good factor. It resides deep down in the soul of a person and no one can take it from us unless we allow them. Thank you all for listening and God bless you all. Oh.